Um, so good evening and welcome to a very delayed start and we've been given 45 minutes in which to wrap things up, so we will. Um, you know the speakers, uh, Mr. Uh, Frederick Pages, uh, Shobhan Chaudhary and Sharnath Banerjee who all work in three completely different kinds of uh, medium, media, yes. Uh, I was, I, I spent several hours last evening trying to find uh, some of the texts of Jean-Baptiste Botul and, and the name has a resonance because you know the way it's spelled in Bangla it's Botol so you know and he has this <laughs> so, <laughs> Botol means bottle which is used Bangla. for alcohol yes, yes. Very happy bottle yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah so so and uh, <laughs> and uh, Jean-Baptiste Botul is this fictional uh, uh, philosopher who uh, Frederick has created, and uh, recently a well-known quote-unquote philosopher, uh, Bernard Henri Lévy, uh, actually took him seriously in a refutation of Kant and uh, made a complete ass of himself, which is good. Uh, academics uh, need to do... <laughs> Easy for him. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, without further ado, let me uh, start off with Frederick. I think the, uh, the format is you talk talk a little bit about your, your work. And, and your work will be, I think, completely unknown to everybody here except for a few people who look as if they might know French in the front row, although I'm not sure. Uh, so uh, what, what made you create this fictional uh, philosopher? Yeah. Uh, I studied philosophy uh, in France, in the Sorbonne. I was a teacher in philosophy, but after some years I get bored with this uh, academic philosophy. So I decided to create my own philosopher. I, I thought it was easier for me to uh, speak about the philosopher uh, I was creating, okay? So uh, nobody could uh, say to me what to speak, what to think about this philosopher because it was my own philosopher. So I decided with some friend, we create this philosopher, Jean-Baptiste Botul. Very special because we don't know anything about him. We don't know about his life and we don't know uh, anything about his thoughts. So it is very, very convenient to say what we want. Okay? Uh, it's a philosopher of the oral tradition. He didn't write books. So it's very convenient because everything is possible for uh, interpreting his uh, philosophy and so on. At, the, at first it was like a joke. Not to cheat people but only to have fun and uh, to meet between friends. But after some years, uh, it was more than a joke, okay? And you, you quoted this famous uh, French philosopher, Mr. Lévy. Uh, he, wrote, he, he, he read a book by Botul, because Botul did not write, but his uh, followers collected what he said. It happens uh, often in uh, uh, the story of philosophy. And this very famous French philosopher made a book quoting uh, Platoon, Aristotle, Nietzsche, Kant, and Jean-Baptiste Botul. So it was a very good surprise for us and an honor <laughs> to see uh, our philosopher quoted at the same level as a very famous philosopher. And since that time, uh, we are very... You, we are, uh, continuing to speak and to work about Botul. We did not... We don't know uh, still anything about him. Everything is possible. But Tull, as we say, is the black hole of philosophy. You know, which is a black hole in astrophysics. Something uh, with a lot of energy inside, but we, you don't see anything. But Tull is, a, is a, a hole of energy, is a tank of energy. But it's a mystery in the, at the same time. And it's, uh, it, is, it, it gives us, and he gives you maybe, in India too, a lot of, uh, of energy to make philosophy, to share philosophy, because everyone can stand up and say, I think that Botul said that, and so on. Everybody is allowed to think what he wants about this Botul, and it allows every person here, it permits to every person here to make philosophy without being an academic philosopher. Okay, so there is, I think, a uh, serious intent 
behind the creation of Jean Baptiste Botol is not just fun. It, 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 has it become serious now? Or yes, uh, it is serious. For example, you have this book by Botul whose title is The Sexual Life of Immanuel Kant. What does it mean, sexual life? Kant is known as uh, having no sexual life. So uh, it's very interesting. How is it possible? For me, at least. So uh, the serious thing is we can consider that the life of a philosopher is part of their philosophy, of course. So a philosopher with no sexual life is a very interesting philosopher for the philosophy itself. Okay. So I get inside this issue without any prejudice. Uh, I read all the biographies about Kant, and all was is printed I in this book is very serious concerning Kant, his books, his life, you know, his theory, and so on. So no, no academic specialist in the Sorbonne or elsewhere can come and say, Mr. Pachez, you are wrong. Kant did not say that. Yes, he did. Okay, it's very solid. It's very firm for the basis. After, we can fancy a lot of things. Right. Um, let me move to uh, Sarnath because, uh, you know, I know it's a problem. I can see your faces and the blankness on your faces tells me that you have not read uh, his work or Jean-Baptiste Botul's work. Uh, which is not surprising because it hasn't been translated into English, unfortunately, let alone any other Indian language, which is a great pity uh, because it has been translated into several other languages. Yes, right. But maybe it, it could be translated directly in Bengali. In, in Bangla. Yes, it's my wish. Okay. So someone who knows French and knows Bangla could take on the task. But let, let me go to Sarnath because uh, one of the things that I find um, you know, similar with the figure of Jean-Baptiste Botul is uh, Sharnath's second uh, graphic novel, The Barn Owl's Wondrous Cap uh, Capers, which in turn is based on an earlier text, uh, Hutom Pachan Naksha. So uh, what made you choose that text and uh, why did you choose to... Uh, 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 as you know, uh, Frederick, we had this... Uh, character uh, in Bengal called uh, Hutum. Uh, recently, Chitralaka has a nice translation of his. Uh, he was an aristocrat who used to wander uh, Kali Prashunno Shingo, that was his name. Uh, by day, uh, he was uh, just a regular gentry. By evening, uh, correct me if I'm factually, I'm always factually wrong, which is why I invent my own facts. Uh, and uh, by, by, by night, he would sort of, you know, you go to the opium dens. The, the Calcutta was a very, you know, being the second city of the empire, it was a very teeming, dark city full of, like, you know, forbidden pleasures. And it was an actual true city. Uh, uh, opium dens, uh, harbor, prostitutes. You ask for it, it's all there. You know, it's all, like, spread out for you. And he had this thing uh, to kind of, you know, penetrate deeper. He also had this sort of Coleridge's uh, thing about, like, this sort of, you know, the, the elemental fear of home. You know, he would wander. You know, he's a classic night wanderer, like Charles Baudelaire. The Flaneur, uh, the Flaneur figure, absolutely. Flaneur uh, with a sense of cosmetic danger. Right. Bengalis don't like proper danger. We like a slight bit of cosmetic danger, sort of, you know. So, you know, we don't want like... So, uh, so he would... And then he would write this book of scandals, which, uh, which I thought like, gave a much more deeper understanding of history. Now, I, uh, 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 after writing Corridor, uh, 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 suddenly had a, didn't have much to do. So I, I just started wandering around the city. And I decided that rather than actually coming up with a new character and a new this, that, I would base it on an, I would do the Jadupur thing, yeah. as in like the postmodern shift, yeah. and use a pre existing uh, template such as uh, Hutum Pacha Naksha, which is this, uh, this Coleridge, Edgar Allan Poe, whatever, you know, all the flaneers kind of thing, and, and make a book of scandals which reveal the history of Calcutta, which is kind of uh, full of like stories which ca you can either believe it or you. 
if you want to be, I mean, you know, they're like boxing legends. You want to believe it, if you don't want to believe it, it's all fine, you know, nobody really cares. So I created this fictitious book. It gave me a lot of... Uh, Freedom. Yeah, it started off by saying that this book is inspired by history, but not limited by it. So it's like in the dark armpits of history. Like, like there are stories like Tipu Sultan, who also uh, one of our residents, his family came to. There's stories that Tipu, whenever Tipu is a uh, southern uh, king, each time he used to swing his uh, sword, it would make this eerie shriek like sound because his uh, foundry where the swords were uh, forged was next to these dungeons where his prisoners were kept. Mostly British, British prisoners who used to constantly uh, 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 threaten with circumcision. <laughs> You would kind of get rats and circumcised rats just to show them this is how it, it is. <laughs> so, uh, so the, after a, a white hot metal was done, he would get one of the prisoners and then the, the sword was tempered in blood, which is why each time Tipu swung his sword. Uh, similar stories, you know, history is full of them. I just wanted to tell, and but not take any historical authenticity, which is why I created this world. Pretty much what Frederick has said, that it's, it, it reveals another kind of truth, which is not about like people who constantly try to kind of give me grammatic, you know, those annoying people who try to always yeah, correct your like grammar. Me. Yeah. Like me. You are like yeah. one of them. Grammar, fact, yeah. this, that. There's one category of people who are constantly trying to correct you about, you know, how to do things. Just to avoid briefly. Okay, good. I'm very happy that I'm the only person here who was actually allegedly read literature. He's a biochemist, he's an engineer, he's a philosopher. So I'm very happy <laughs> to correct your grammar, as it were. But coming to history, uh, <coughs> Shobhan's uh, work, uh, the competent authority, which is utterly brilliant. Uh, and I was just chatting with him <coughs> before coming here, you know, Mala, Malavika Banerjee, who's sort of big boss of this fest, puts us together and says, talk before you go up on stage. So, so we have no choice, we have to talk. And I said, you know, is the competent authority what happens to Augusto Sen after many years in the IAS, uh, in the August Sen of uh, English August? But also another question to you, Shobhan, is about your blog, uh, shobhanc at wordpress.com. If you haven't been there, go there. It's the funniest thing you'll read uh, after Narendra Modi's speeches. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Shovan, uh, how how do you relate to history? Because you, he's he's actually, I mean, if, if 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 you haven't read it, which I suspect you haven't, because about twelve people visit it every day, uh, all of whom are here, I know, but that still leaves about thirty others who haven't read it. Uh, he he does takes on absolutely contemporary stuff that's happening. His latest post, if I'm not wrong, is a is a news item which talks about celebration in the world of high finance because Robert Vadra is going to be the next boss of uh, Berkshire Hathaway. And <laughs> so money is in good hands. So how, how, how do you, uh, and what's your take on history and why are you writing these kinds of things? Well, since you asked about uh, history specifically, uh, see, in, in school, uh, I try to avoid it as, as much as possible. They can't, they can't. Yeah, okay. In school, I try to avoid history as much as possible. But, you know, subsequently what happened was that I was doing this blog and uh, I wanted it to be funny and I thought let me look at uh, current events and try and make it funny and what I figured out was that most current events are like, you know, connected to the past actually, uh, which was a major insight and I realized at that point on the basis of that insight that some history would have to be studied and I, I discovered wonderful things like uh, Lord Mountbatten uh, sank practically every ship he ever served on. Uh, and, you know, every, every, every superior officer of Lord Bad Mountbatten's, whenever he was transferred somewhere else, there were major celebrations in the place that he was working before that, you know. Uh, he also once suggested that, uh, that because aircraft carriers take a lot of time to build, and Britain was in the middle of a life or death struggle with the Nazi empire. Uh, so he also suggested that the Royal Navy should use uh, icebergs uh, as aircraft carriers, and they would just have to be towed down from, you know, the North Pole and and you know, brought so that you know, then you have to land the planes on them. So, so they didn't do that. He's also, and I'm not making this up, uh, the only, first and only time he met the head of the US Navy, uh, he shot him accidentally in the foot, uh, which soured Anglo-US relations quite significantly. And uh, that guy never trusted Englishmen again, you know. Uh, so I was quite rewarded by my study of history. And so you, I felt the impulse to do more and more of it. So, you know, that's 
how I kind of got sort of uh, dragged into that. Yeah. And just as you have a regular block, uh, Frederick also writes uh, regularly for uh, Le Canard Prochain. Uh, yeah. Le Canard Prochain, yeah. yes. It's not a blog, it's a newspaper. No, I know it's a yes. newspaper, but, yeah. but I'm saying you are also a regular writer. I mean, you, you, I'm like Sarnath it's has the great privilege of, you know, bringing out a, a magnificent, uh, you know, masterpiece for all time when he feels like it after, you know, several years. But you guys have you have to produce something on a regular basis. Yes, uh, because uh, it's my job, because Botul is not feeding me, so I have to work, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, so I'm a journalist, yeah. uh, yes. And uh, so the Canard Enchaîné is, uh, is typical French satirical paper. It's a weekly paper, very old, pa very old newspaper, almost a, a century, almost 100. It was founded almost 100 ago, uh, 100 years ago. So I've been working in Le Canard. Le Canard Enchaîné means, Le Canard uh, in English is a duck, as you know, maybe, duck. Enchaîné means in chains. So, so we are not a human and we are not free. A canard enchaîné, uh, uh, enchants ducks. Okay, it is ironical. Even the name is already ironical. And uh, the canard enchaîné is known, very famous in, in France, and uh, because, because of his investigative works first, and also because of his tone, his satirical tone, his ironical tone, and a special way of writing, and that's the issue of this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what was your question? Is it no, no? Is it difficult to be funny? Is it difficult to be funny? Uh, yes, it is. But it's very pleasant to be paid to be funny. <laughs> it's in my case. Okay. I don't work. I have fun. So it is. It's difficult because there are so many humorists on the field, radio, TV. Printed press. So what is difficult is to be original and to find a very original point of view to find something that the others do not find. Okay, that's the point. Okay, for the rest, no, it's not difficult. You have to be relaxed and to let you alone and to let you uh, go. And maybe and you have to drink. Okay, it's very important. You have to go on the cafe in, in Paris, and very important, because you, you work v better in a cafe than in a meeting hall, a meeting point. When you are around the table to find a funny idea, it doesn't work. Never. Okay? Where you are going uh, downstairs on the bistro, the cafe, okay, with a bunch of friends, of journalists, of colleagues, and you are speaking about the actuality, uh, Obviously, you'll find a funny thing for the paper. So when my boss sees me and the bistro, he's very happy because he guessed that maybe I could find something. So you've trained him perfectly. Yes. You've trained him perfectly. He thinks you're working when you're sitting at the bistro. You've trained your boss perfectly. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Sure, sure. Good. Yes. Good. 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 With a little glass of wine is, is, st is still better. Fabulous. Yes. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Any editors here? No, you guys stick. We should have glasses of wine here. They'll become even funnier, but, but water, unfortunately. Water perhaps. Huh? water, perhaps, you know. <laughs> to, to which you bring out something from your pocket and... Okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, Sharnath. Sharnath told me that one of the questions he'd been asked uh, is, uh, why don't you write all your stuff? Why do you draw? Uh, and I thought, good, you know, I'm, I'm paid to repeat what other people have said far better than I. So let me ask you the same question. What made you choose the, the form, of the, the, the graphic novel form? Uh, this is a serious question. Uh, uh, mm. this, is a, this is a difficult question to answer because it's like asking. It's like uh, asking a Rudravina player why aren't you playing Sarangi? Okay. But uh, no, what I'm trying to say is... No, no, can, can, I, can I rephrase it? Okay. When I say, I mean, your, 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 all your works I'll have a very strong... I'll rephrase it for you. Okay, good, good. <laughs> He's doing my job. <laughs> First, I have to say that I don't... I mean, yes, my fortune's turned since I did graphic novel and now I just don't know what to do with my money. <laughs> oh, I, no, I, I have three children. Uh, I'm putting them in... We'll, we'll talk I after just, this. I just we'll sloshing talk around in this. cash. I mean, it's absolutely... <laughs> 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 uh, investments, just like, you know, an occasional... <laughs> uh, 
and also it's slightly embarrassing to tell people what you do for a living because graphic novel uh, makes people think that you're either you know what it means yes you're doing some bortola stuff or yes. some uh, you know like pornography. 50 shades of gray very graphic yeah, novel yeah. yes He's That's the one. Yeah. My father <laughs> even says that he's very graphic. Very graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a uh, <laughs> problematic. But so I I say all sorts of things. Uh, I uh, uh, various parties I say I am a distributor of industrial absorbents which is which is why I'm basically saying that both Frederick and Shohan has at least a job to talk about. I don't I'm jobless fundamentally. Which is why I uh, have to invent one. But uh, you will be like Hutum pretty well, <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> so uh, anyway that sort of clears the confusion about finances no, 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 like the daily just, just just stop you and, and and give you that question you know your 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 works have a strong narrative element which i like or even though the narrative is sometimes fractured sometimes coming back yeah do you see them as images first or do you sort of think of a kind of story because and this is a question i'd ask shobhan as well because he's a guy who writes extremely graphic novels right. but not with pictures in them right right although i love the picture on the cover of the competent authority uh, and, and and he he's also someone i'd ask the same question so after he answers maybe sure. you come to come back to it do, do you see them or do you that's a think very them? good question as a, a matter of fact uh, shamantok the question you asked was was asked